So I thought I signed up for a Mai Tai making class, but it appears it's a Muay Thai. Whoa! I'm Pamela Holt, your host of Me, Myself, and the World. <laughs> I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I was raised on the beautiful island of Oahu, Hawaii. I've been solo traveling for quite some time and I just recently hit my 81st country. This is the art of solo travel and with solo travel comes a lot of adventure and a lot of new friends. I invite you to join my solo travel revolution as we explore this great planet of ours together. Welcome to Me, Myself, and the World. I'm your host, Pamela Holt, and this is Bali, Indonesia. <laughs> I've had a wonderful time here in Ubud, but it's time to move on to my next solo destination. Thank you so much for a wonderful hey, stay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Oh. I found a really amazing looking villa in Seminyak, which is in between Chenggu and Kuta near the beach at Bali. Okay, I found this place online on a popular home sharing website. I'm so looking forward to seeing it in person. You never really know what it looks like. Cross our fingers, here we go. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Look at this place. Look at the hammock. Oh. Look at the pretty flowers. Frangipani in Bali, but in Hawaii we call this plumeria. They come in yellow, pink, red, and a few variations. <gasps> and the pool! Look at this pool! Wow, this is nice. An iron. A little touch of home, have a few clothes that will be unwrinkled for a split moment during my holiday. <laughs> it's very rare to find an iron. All right, here's my crib. I'll be here for the next couple of days, just my villa in Seminyak, Bali. Gotta go jump in the pool. I've just been getting a little work done, and now that I'm all settled in, I'm going to book some fun adventures. I found this class, Muay Thai. It's really popular here in Southeast Asia. I have no idea really what it is besides boxing, but I'm about to find out. I'm heading to the Chenggu studio. Take a break. He's busy, he can't see me. 
last round. Muay Thai accomplished. That was an amazing Muay Thai class here at the Chengku studio. Thank you. Dika. Dika, that's my name. Dika Welcome. was an amazing teacher. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Very it much. A, it was a pleasure to have you. Do you have any pointers for me? Pointers for you? Yeah. Well, we can start with the stance. Okay. You can have your, if you're right handed, your left foot is always forward. Ah. Right. Okay. And then hands up, at yeah. least chin level. Traditionally, we keep Muay Thai here, Woo. just to avoid the clinch. Okay, because you can at least, break out. Yes, but at least keep it on your chin. Okay. Slightly, slightly leaning sideways, sorry, uh, okay. leaning sideways instead of squared up. Ah. From here, just throw the one, two, there. One. That's your left hand. Yep. With, this is the jab, follow up with the cross. Okay. Yeah, just make sure when you punch, your hand is nice and straight, and then the other hand is always on the chin. Okay. Now, you're throwing your straight hand, the same time you take back your left hand, again, your hand is always the chin. And pr protecting. Yeah. Protecting the chin at all times. The jaw is very fragile, mm -hmm. so we need to protect it all the time. All right, so always hands up, chin down. That's it, that's the first basic strikes of Muay Thai or boxing. One, two, left, left and then right. right. That's it, full extension on left, the punches. Right. Exhale when you punch, and always back to the chin. One, two. That's it. That's the very first Muay Thai. Wow. I'm going to go home and practice in the mirror. Yeah. You can use Matt as a punching bag. All right, perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been here uh, in Bali roughly one and a half years. I was in Singapore before Bali. Yeah, I was living a very corporate life over there. And ah. I, was, I came to Bali uh, for holiday just for a month. And just fell in love with the place. I, I just thought, you know what? If I could stay here, uh, why not? And you know what? I could stay here. Yeah. So here I am uh, roughly 15 months later. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is amazing. I don't know what the future holds for me. I'm just taking it one day at a time, uh, enjoying uh, every day that I'm here. Yeah, I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. If you had one one thing to share with people that are solo traveling to Bali, what solo might it be? Solo traveling to Bali. Well, uh, just have uh, zero expectations and let, let, the, let the island surprise you. Don't come here thinking, oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a party there, here or there. Uh, just, just come here and have an open mind. I think you'll be exposed to the many uh, different types of people here. Uh, it doesn't matter what your background is, uh, everyone here is sort of uh, trying to find themselves in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that reason, I think everybody just connects with everyone. So yeah, come, come to Bali. Let it unfold. Yeah. Thank, yeah. you, Thank so you so much for a very wonderful so class. Give me a hug. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Cut. We'll be back. <laughs>
We ran into each other the other day at the Bali Swing. The Guardia Vishnu Kankana statue above us is 120.9 meters. And to give you an idea, the Statue of Liberty is only 85 meters. So it's pretty impressive and pretty tall. It's made of copper, but of course, as the copper changes over time, it gives us that green color, which is so beautiful. Guardia Vishnu Kankana statue depicts Vishnu riding Guardia. In Hindu mythology, Lord Vishnu is seen as the protector of the universe, while his trusted companion, the mighty eagle-like Guardia, represents loyalty and selfless devotion. Kinkana means gold, and both are adorned in crowns of gold and mosaic. The Guardia is also the national emblem of Indonesia and represents freedom. It's been fun checking out the Garuda Vishnu Kinkana Cultural Park, but now we're off to Uluwatu Temple and the Ketchak Dance. Ketchak dance is one of the most unique Balinese dances. It is not accompanied by instruments. It's accompanied by a choir of about 70 men and their voices only. We're here at Uluwatu Temple and we're overlooking the ocean. It's going to be an incredible experience and I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. Pleasure. We got to sit down with our Balinese tour guide, Gede Siddhartha, for some insight on the Balinese culture and the tradition of naming a child. Gede Siddhartha. Yeah, that's my name, Gede Siddhartha. And Gede, you are the firstborn. I am the firstborn, yeah. You told me a little bit about this, and I'm still trying to understand the whole idea of the names and where they land. So firstborn is Gede or Wayan. Wayan. Mm -hmm. The second name is it's Made. Made. Or Kadek. Kadek. Uh, also Nanga. Nene. Nanga. Nanga has been uh, middles. Made, middle. Oh. Yeah. Nanga. That's been uh, okay. middles. Too, yeah. And third child? The third is Koman. Koman. Nyoman. Yeah, most people use Nyoman. Number four is Ketut. Ketuk. 
And Captain. Five? five is back to Wayan or Madif. Wayan is for male and female, but Gede is for male, mm -hmm. but for female is Ilu. 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 That's like my wife's name, Ilu. She's also the first. And then after one. three months, you get. Three months baby ceremony. On that time, the parent gave uh, what I, do we say, complete name or second name. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like my name is Gede Sudarta. So my parent gave me Sudarta when I'm three months old. And what does Sudarta mean? Between the ceremony, Su is mean good. Uh huh. Darta is mean uh, like what is the news? Good news. Yes, yeah, Su. People call me in my village or family call me Sue. Some people call me Darta. Right. Some friends call me Darta. Mm -hmm. And but most people call me uh, Sue. Okay. Uh, if you would like to know about uh, Balinese people, you can can stay with uh, Balinese people like in the compound because. It, most of the people in Ubud area, they have a room to rent. Right. So you can stay with them, you know, you can talk, every day you can talk with the family, and every day you see what they do daily, for daily life, you know. Yeah. So you can have a breakfast in the kitchen, it's not like in the hotel. Right. You, put, you, know, you go to the restaurant, you go to the kitchen, you can learn how to make breakfast, Balinese breakfast, and then you can learn how to make offering and everything. I think it's good if you can can join them. Right, to at a homestay. Yeah, the homestay, yeah. And then you feel that you're in Bali right. when, you, when you stay with Balinese people. Because many people, they come to Bali, but they stay in Nusa Dua, it's in a big hotel, but they never have a conversation with the Balinese, the real Balinese people. Right. I feel so lucky I, because, you know, I'm always say thanks to the God, you know, to the Spirit. Yeah, I say God because I believe, I believe so much, you know. I'm always, always say thanks because I feel like every single person that I met, they're very special for me, you know. So, yeah, that's make me so happy, you know. I'm coming from a very poor family, so yeah, so I've been work hard. I love my life, you know. Thank you for sharing your home mm -hmm. with me. You're welcome. Uh, it's a mm. pleasure, really, really a pleasure, yeah. Suksma. <laughs> Suksma Mowali. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So my friend and I bought these yesterday. They're basically like an art glass melded or blown into the wood. They're absolutely beautiful. And I'm gonna, <laughs> we now have two art glasses. <laughs> we had three. We now have two art glasses. Um, Welcome to Me, Myself, and the World. I'm your host, Pamela Holt, and this is Packing with Pamela. So today I'm gonna talk about probably my favorite item for packing, packing pods. This company, they make, well, I bought this online. It is four different sizes of packing pods, and it's just a simple little, like, nylon zippered case that I can expand which usually I need to do, comes with a super handy handle, and I divide all my things into uh, different categories. So in this particular category, I've got sweaters and wraps. Super easy, I know exactly where to go to. In this one, I have shirts. In this one, I have pants and skirts. And in this one, I have dresses. The greatest thing is I can fold Every, I can iron everything and fold it really nicely and it stays put in these little packing pods, especially when I um, don't expand it. So if I put them in expanded and then I close it up, it makes it really taut. 
And so the clothes don't move around and everything stays pretty ironed. It's an excellent way to travel. And then I always keep all my personables, underwears, etc., in another little case, which this one I can wash each time. I even sometimes wash it mid-trip. And it's really wonderful. These packing pods, I simply take it out of my suitcase, plop it right in the, the armoire or wherever. If I'm just setting it all out, I can easily get to everything and then whoosh, put it right back in my bag. Packing pods are perfect with packing with Pamela. Haha, <laughs> say that five times fast. See you next time on Me, Myself, and the World. an incredible experience in Bali, Indonesia. I've learned about the culture, met wonderful locals, cooked up their traditional dishes, tried a little Muay Thai, and even practiced their local art. I live by the motto, when in Rome. So on my solo travels, I did as the Balinese do. Stay tuned for next episode as we head up to Vietnam to continue our solo travel revolution. I'm Pamela Holt saying Salamantingo from Bali. Mwah.